Among the challenges facing enterprises today as we embark on this digital transformation is the fact that when we think about the assembly process or service process of new products, quite often assembly process methodologies, uh, servicing and maintenance procedures, uh, those are best derived by taking things apart and putting them back together in reality. And as we go into digital transformation and we start designing more and more things 100% digital and fully reliant on our computer tools, is we have to face the reality that quite often the products that we are making, uh, we design them in final part position as if they magically teleport there um, in situ uh, just the way we design them. But that's not really the way things work, right? We design things in final part position, but then we still have to define the process by which those things get into that product position and also how we can service and maintain them. So, for example, what I'd like to do in this uh, demonstration today is take a look at this. Um, this is the parachute assembly, the descent assembly for a crewed um, spacecraft. And maybe this is the aerospace product we want to take a look at today. Here on uh, this area right here, yes, that is a puzzle. That is a child's toy. Nobody was giving me permission to use an actual component from a crewed vessel, so I had to just use this as a proxy to demonstrate for you today. And what I want to do is I want to validate that this thing can, in fact, if it was here in final position, be disassembled in situ in this environment without causing any sort of uncomfortable collisions or impossibilities for extraction or insertion. Because that way I could take that recorded sequence of taking this thing apart from final part position and that in a way becomes the assembly process that's necessary for putting this thing together. So I'm just going to go ahead and move myself over here so that I can start planning this out. I'm going to go into my process evaluation. Right? And what I want to do is I want to disassemble this. Now, you can see everything change color on me. It's, uh, it's all blue here. And all of these blue objects represent parts of a subassembly that I now have the opportunity to record the disassembly sequence of them in order to come up with a plausible sequence. So let's say I grab this piece right here. I try to lift it up. I try to pull it down. I try to pull it towards me. And you see all those red arrows popping up on the screen. And each one of those red arrows indicates that the geometry is colliding with the other parts of the subassembly. And therefore, the geometry is preventing me from extracting that one component all by itself. Now, I happen to take a look here, and I can see that this component right here doesn't look like it has any of those teeth or these uh, bars going across it. So it looks like this is a candidate to be lifted straight up or to be pulled back away from me. So I'll try to lift this one straight up. Again, you can see that collision keeping it from happening, but you can see that it pulled toward me, right? So in this case, I know that this could in fact be the final component or final piece to be subassembled into that uh, area, that subassembly. Now when I take another look, I'm looking again for the ability to extract some of these pieces out, letting them slide. Maybe this one could come out next, and that one does come out next, so I can just kind of put that aside, set that aside, and now I grab onto this one, looks like it might slide out, so I start grabbing this one, and look at that. So you can see once I slide this far over that this rest of the capsule assembly is blocking me from being able to take that out. And so I need to be able to see, can I wiggle this around a little bit? And yeah, I, I can get that out. So I can do a little bit of Jenga Jenga and get that out of there um, safely. Now I start looking for the next component. It doesn't look like this one's going to really slide anywhere. Maybe it's, it's not that one. Oh, this one can come up. There we go. So that one came up. And now I look for the other piece that could come out. And maybe, aha. So the next piece that is interlocking, or preventing any other pieces from coming out, is this one. And this one, it looks like it needs to go down. Now, I understand that that means that the rest of this geometry would have to lift up and away from it. So maybe that piece that I just found can't go any other direction except for down. 
is in fact a, a piece that could be you know bolted to the rest of this assembly, and then this subassembly piece would mount on top of that. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm looking to learn when I'm doing this uh, assembly discovery or disassembly discovery of a new assembly bill of materials. Once I figured out that one of those components had to be fixed and had the rest of the parts lifted away from it as a contiguous unit, then I was able to just simply reassign those objects into a separate subassembly that is nested within the other subassembly. And now once I set it aside, I can do the subassembly of those components uh, relative to themselves and also relative to the working environment and identify the rest of that subassembly process.